three or four, I don't know. And now we're rolling to the White House. It's so cool. Have you ever seen the White House before? I've never seen the White House. traffic here leaving Baltimore on our way to uh, C-SPAN. Well, well, I mean, we only have 40 minutes. 40 minutes. We did it. We'll get there. What is out there, there are supports. Maryland, where I'm just coming from right now, um, you have a situation where they've extended care to 21 for years now. Since 2000, they've had a college tuition waiver. We're in C-SPAN Green Room right now. We're actually right in front of the uh, United States Capitol. And Daniel is speaking to <laughs> C-SPAN reporters on air, live. Appreciate so, you coming in and taking all of our calls. And yeah, no we problem. We had a lot of good calls. People, uh, I was glad the foster family's line was... Uh, yeah, that was good. That was interesting. It was tough. It's tough stuff out there. It's hard Thank to, you for being here. A lot of work to do. While questions are being raised about how effective our education system is for students overall, some of them are at particular risk, including children living in foster care. Today the results of a new study are being released on educational outcomes for foster children. And with me to discuss them are the talented, intelligent, and beautiful Stacy Scott Turner of Bravo TV's Real Housewives of DC, herself a former foster child, and the dashing, handsome, and intelligent Daniel Heimpel of the Fostering Media Connections campaign. But when you see that they get into programs um, that extend care past 21, that, um, that provide educational support. So what it says is that despite what these young people go through, if they're given the opportunity, they can come back and come back stronger than the general population. But I, I got a chance to talk about Casey Family Services because the question came up about teen pregnancies. Yeah. And I was talking about, well, you know, the thing is to break that cycle. And I yeah, I think it's all done. It's all done? Yes. Are we completed? That's. It was, it's still printing, we only have three copies. Then how are we going to get, oh, we're having that on the side, yeah. Uh, we're trying to get everything together before the press conference today at 12, so everybody's a little busy. I know, these are the old ones. And it came together in three weeks. Yeah. yeah. So what's going to happen right now? We're getting ready to head out to go to the Capitol Visitor Center. The kids are coming a little early, get set up. Then yeah. So we're in the Capitol Visitor Center. Um, we've got a press conference today discussing educational stability and the importance of that. We brought Soka Mao and some other folks out to talk about this issue. We've got some new data we're going to release. We've got Stacy Scott Turner, who was with us yesterday um, at the radio, kind of plugging this event. And we've got some members of Congress as well. So hopefully we'll get some press out. We've worked really hard. Um, and hopefully some people will come. So that's about it. On behalf of the Congressional Coalition on Adoption Institute and the Fostering Media Connections Campaign, I would like to welcome you to today's event entitled Back to School, Back to Instability. Well, I'm pleased to be here today to support the adoption and foster care community and to highlight the issues associated with youth in foster care and education. I entered foster care at the age of five and I aged out at 18. I lived with over 10 different foster families. Um, I've been through three different elementary schools, three different middle schools, and four different high schools. It's hard enough learning in today's educational system without having it changed about every six weeks or six months or two years. And so basically what this is really all about is trying to recognize that if they were our kids, We'd be down there at the PTA fighting like mad to make a stable school system for them. During my time uh, in the foster care system, I have changed placements six times. In 2003, the state of California's legislature and the governor signed Assembly Bill 490 to help foster youth like myself 
to be able to continue with my school despite changing placements. So I want to thank uh, Fostering Meeting Connections for having me here today, all the congressmen and their staff who are providing leadership to this conversation, and all of the media who are covering it. Uh, I am responsible for 4,489 children. In the eyes of the law, I'm their mother. And I take this responsible responsibility very, very seriously. And it's your willingness to generate this conversation and cover it that helps folks like me be courageous in the act of caring for them. So thank you very much. So tell us about knowledge. Knowledge is basically learning about the foster care system nationwide and how to fix it and helping out foster youth nationwide. So come on, you ever seen the White House before? I've never seen the White House up close. I've always seen it on, on TV, so it's my first time. I'm excited.